Hey, and Justin here. This is Anarchy in the UK by the Sex Pistols. Couldn't be more ironic, really. I'm sitting in an office block where I'm worrying about being quiet and not upsetting my neighbours. Um, but I do have a little bit of cred. When I was 14, I had a blue mohawk and safety pins in the ear, the whole thing, chain around the neck like Sid Vicious. I was a proper little punk terror. Uh, not anymore. That was 30 years ago or something like that, long time ago. But this is a fantastic song for beginners getting into power chords. Really, really fun one. You can play most of it with just with the fifth string root power chord. So if you're learning about that stuff, keeping the thickest string muted, all of that stuff, really, really great to learn. Aside from that, with this a song like this, if you're learning it just because you love the song as opposed to being power chord practice, the energy and the vibe that you put into playing music like this is far more important than getting the chords right. If you get some strings ringing out or the chords a bit fluffy, doesn't matter. You want to be playing it and really meaning it. That's the sort of thing that's going to come across when you play a song like this rather than playing it kind of perfectly. That said, would recommend as part of your guitar journey, you're learning songs like this and trying to get it as right as you can. But just remember, if you're ever performing it, you really want to be giving it some and putting the, your spirit into it because that's what will make the biggest difference. So, so let's start off by having a look at the intro, generally a good place to start. We're going to have a G chord all of the way up at the 10th fret. So first finger in the 10th fret of the fifth string. Third and fourth fingers two frets higher, that'll be the 12th fret on the middle two strings, making sure that the tip of your first finger there is muting the thicker string. That's a really, really important thing. Particularly again, a song like this, you're gonna be strumming it pretty hard. You wanna be playing it with a bit of gusto, you know. Uh, and if you're gonna do that, you can't be really fussy about where the pick's going. So you need to be a little bit, you know, careful for muting that thicker string, except for the, in the verses where I'm gonna point out a, a slightly different uh, approach. So it starts off on the G and it's going to go one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. So there's one bar of eighth notes, all down picks, one and two and three and four and one. And on beat one, you hold that chord for a whole bar. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Then you're going to move it down a tone to the note F. So first finger will now be in the eighth fret. Third and fourth fingers are going to stay relative the same position relative to the first finger all of the way through because it's power chords right the way through. That's an F chord, we've got one bar on that. Down one fret to an E, half a bar on that, so four strums, one and two and down another tone to the D, so four strums on that. And then we're on C at the beginning for four bars, one and two. Then we're into the verse okay so let's take it once just play through that intro not too difficult that one is just moving that power chord shape around so starting up there on the g one two three four one two three four one two three four f e d c second bar and then we're into the verse now the verse has got this cool little riff going on where you lift your finger up, your first finger up, on beats two and four. So you have one, two, and three, and four, and one, two. So first you just lift it right off. Now what becomes much more important at this point is that the pick is not playing the thicker string. So you want to have developed a bit more accuracy there with the pick and hand because if you're already playing the thicker string, you're going to have that low E rhythm out and that just yeah, doesn't sound good. So, okay, so I'm going to refer to that as the little riff. Here 
any of you doing my courses will be aware of this thing, the backbeat, which happens on two and four. Normally we accent it. So again, we're doing that. You can feel, you know, when I'm just playing that on its own. <laughs> Having that note, that difference on beats two and four gives it the kind of, the feeling of momentum, gives it a little bit more energy. So in the verses, we've got one, two, and three. got to slide all of the way from the C at the 3rd fret all of the way up to F at the 8th fret, 1st finger in the 8th fret and then down one semitone to the E. So we have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 That's the main riff for the verses. So it does that two bar pattern four times, but the very last time it doesn't go up to the F and the E chord. So you just have C, one, two, three, second time, third time, fourth time. there that last time through so that's your verse pattern relatively simple a lot of beginners if you're new to this sort of stuff will probably struggle a bit with sliding up to the fifth fret and the key thing here when you're moving your power chords around is to relax the pressure but not to lift your fingers off the string so you don't want to go from c lift everything off and then refine the chord complete waste of energy you want to find the shape on the c relax the hand but the fingers are still in contact with the strings slide it up and then press it down again. So you want to get used to this idea of being able to manipulate the shape, sliding it up and down the fretboard by just relaxing the grip on the strings and then being able to slide it, but maintaining the finger contact with the strings, which will help keep the fingers on the right strings and help keep the shape. Obviously the third and fourth fingers are a little further apart here for the C than they are for the F, but you find it probably won't take too much practice for your hand to kind of figure that out. One thing you might notice is that I'm pulling my second finger down here so you can clearly see my fingers. When I'm playing for real, I generally just leave the second finger going wherever it feels natural to us, just relaxed. But you know, if you notice me doing that, I don't think it's something that you should do. Just keep your second finger in whatever position it feels comfortable in. So now it's time to look at the chorus. So the chorus is starting on a G chord. The two bars. F, E, D, C. Where have we heard that before? In the intro. Well done. So it's exactly the same chord sequence. Now sometimes there it's going to go C, G, especially when it's going back into another verse. When it goes into a bridge section, it doesn't go down to that G chord for that extra bar at the end. Again, with these arrangement -y sort of things, I'm gonna try and give you the tips, but the best way to be doing this stuff is listening to the original recording, playing along, and maybe making your own notes as well about where those little differences are. You can't beat playing along with the original recording. A close second will be using my app to play along with the backing track. That's very, very useful and handy to be able to slow things down and that kind of stuff. But there's definitely, a, I mean, the Sex Pistols, you want to be absorbing that energy as well, you know, to, to get the, the right feeling for it. As I said, the, the feel that you put into this sort of music is much more important even than getting the chords right. So we've looked at the intro, we've looked at the verse, we looked at the chorus, the chorus having the same chords as the uh, intro, but without that pause on the G chord there. There's a couple of other sections that happen. The first one is a little bridge where there's like a little guitar solo thing, and that's going D for a bar. E for a bar, D to E, back to D, E, back to D, and then it goes to G. I think it goes to this low G this time. There's four bars there on the G. And then it's back to a verse. If you fancy having a go at the solo, it's actually relatively easy to play this one. There's a little bit of a kind of a section at the end where it goes a little bit crazy and it's not as defined and therefore it's not as easy to play or as easy to figure out but actually it's kind of cool to make up something of your own at that point if you wanted to do a solo for it anyway 
the, the main kind of riff that happens in that first solo is this little shape here. So first finger in the 14th fret of the thinner string, second finger 15th fret of the second string, and third finger in the 16th fret of the third string. It's a little kind of a B minor triad, but it's being played over a D chord. Uh, we play the third string, first string, second string, and then the third string. Kind of slides up to it, I think. And then it's the same thing up two frets. Back. Up. Back. Up. And now the chord actually changes to a G chord. Sounds like he's going. And then there's some kind of bluesy riff thing in E, uh, in a G, over a G chord. I would recommend. Any kind of little riff here using G minor pentatonic would work really well over that bit. Even just playing the thinnest two strings there at the 15th fret is a really good little, you know, you can give it a bit of a, a vibe there rather than trying to do, which it, it's not exactly what he's playing, but it's, that's pretty close. That's, if you want to have a go at doing something like that, it's first finger in the 12th fret, third string, little finger, 15th fret on the second string. Then second finger goes down on the 13th fret of the second string. Then third finger goes uh, the 13th fret of the second string. Third finger goes down 14th fret of the third string. And then I think it just lifts off to these 12th fret on the second and third strings, which is part of the G chord, which is why it would work that way. But really for that end part of the G, I think, you know, improvising something would be the way to go. Now the other section in this song is another bridge where it just goes to the D chord for an extent, I think it's eight or 16 bars, and there's a nice little guitar riff. Again, this isn't for complete beginners, but if you're kind of pushing that boundary a bit, you're consolidating your beginner level stuff, it's not that difficult to do, and it sounds pretty cool, especially if you're playing in a three-piece band, it's good to have a little solo like this. The first solo, because it's kind of outlying a few notes at the same time, it wouldn't drop out like it would if you were just playing single notes in a in a three-piece band kind of situation and this kind of riff works really well in that environment too so we're going to start with the open d string that's the fourth string then third finger seventh fret third string little finger seventh fret second string we don't want to hear the thin string that should be muted by the underneath of your little finger we're going to play that twice then first finger is going to go down in the fifth fret of the second string Lift off little finger, of course, to get to it. This riff that gets played over the D chord is one that you definitely want to listen to. I'm going to talk about the count, but the most important thing really here is listening to the original recording and getting the sound of the melody in your ear. So you've got this little... That's what you want to be hearing and thinking about when you're playing it, is having that melody... Because if you haven't got it in your ears and you don't know what it's going to sound like, kind of counting it and trying to do it mathematically, I don't think so. It's just not as musical to do it that way. You can do it if you like, and if it helps, that's the reason I, I give you those counts. But you want to remember that the listening is always going to be the best way to do it if you can. So open D string, third finger, seventh fret on the third string, little finger, seventh fret on the second string. One, two, so just dropping it back, so first finger is in the fifth fret of the second string. Making sure, of course, that we always keep the thinnest string muted. We don't want to hear that at all. Two, three, and four, and... On the end after four, little finger goes up a fret to the eighth fret. Three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Little finger goes up, back, back to first finger, then two with the little finger down where it started off and then it's finishing there on the first finger in the seven, uh, fifth fret. So that's the cycle, it's a little two bar cycle. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. And then 
goes back into another verse and a chorus around a few times, and that's actually pretty much the whole song. I'd really recommend that you take different things from this song depending on where you're at. If you're doing my beginner's course and you've just learned your power chords, just be thinking about playing the power chord part and working on to plan along with the record. That would be a great first goal. Just forget about doing the solos or adding in the riffs or any of that stuff. Just really think about the power chords, making sure the thicker string is muted all the time, thinner strings are muted all the time. You could experiment with some palm mute as well. That works really well, uh, particularly if you're playing on your own. You want to think about the dynamics thing, so maybe in the verses you add a little bit of palm muting and then in the chorus you're really gunning it in the chorus. Use a little bit of palm muting. I don't think that's what's going on on the record. On the record it feels a lot more, it's just got a lot of balls going on. There's a lot of energy and a lot of, I guess, anger in that period you know that was what it was all about it was full of energy and vitality and and i think capturing some of that and trying to channel that when you're playing these sort of songs make, like i said makes much bigger difference than worrying about strings ringing out or whatever but i really hope you enjoyed this lesson if you dig what i do i really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button a like and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when i'm doing any of my live transcribing sessions or live interviews and all of that sort of stuff i'll see you for plenty more rock and roll very soon you take care of yourselves Bye bye